You've probably seen WWDC24 and all the awesome advancements that Apple showcased. There's a bunch I'm excited about, not to mention Apple Intelligence. Apple Intelligence. Changes the whole game. That's not cool. Told you to duck. Hit the subscribe button for more. Forgot what we were doing. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna recreate the WWDC 24 log. <laughs> Have your logo ready as a shape layer. Change its color to black. Duplicate the layer and remove fill. Add a stroke instead and set it to 10. While you're at it, add a trim path and set end to 25%. Precompose and name it Hues. Trust me, it'll make sense later. Now rename the layer Outline 1. We're gonna create a new null layer to control things a bit. Because we're control freaks. Set it as a guide layer and start shopping for effects. Add slider and angle control effects. Name them stroke and trim offset. Now keyframe the angle. Zero at the start and one complete loop at the end. Back to our layers panel, select outline 1 and search for trim offset. Link the two so outline 1's trim paths follows our trim offset. And we get this. Pretty cool, huh? You can stop here for that old snake game look. But let's make it more contemporary. Select both layers and search for stroke. Open up the slider effect to see it and stopwatch the actual stroke width. Now put your best Einstein wig on and start typing. Math.sign, open brackets 1 times time, close brackets times 10. This makes the stroke width change between negative 1 and 10 as time passes. And since we can't give a negative value as the width, it just stays 0. It's a big part of the effect. Now get back to the expression and add the slider we just created. This will make it super easy to change the width whenever we want it. Pick a color for the outline. Next, duplicate the outline one. Change the stroke expression to 2 times time and add 10 to the overall expression. Let's also add 50 to the offset to push it forward. You can already see something is happening there, but let's change its color to see it even better. There we go. Isn't that cool? Now do this two more times. We're starting to get somewhere now. To tie everything together, add an adjustment layer and apply turbulent displacement and Gaussian blur effects. Set turbulent amount to 100, size 30, and blurriness 150. Let's jump back to our main comp and see what we have so far. This is looking good, but it's acting weird, right? The colors aren't contained in the logo. Which is why we've got this magic button here. It 
preserves transparency and it follows the bottom layer as a guide. Now we just need the outlines to pop a bit more for that frosted glass look. Go back to the hues comp and duplicate the original outline layer. Bring it all the way to the top, change its color to white, and look for the stroke expression. Now counter stop watching. Reverse stop watching? Which one is it? Let me know in the comments. Stop the expression by holding the option key or alt key and click on the stopwatch. Set it to 2 and 2 instead. Use taper to smoothen the outline. Set the start and end length to 50%. Lower the opacity to 50% to keep things subtle. Now add a Gaussian blur and set it to 10. Next, duplicate this layer and remove the trim pads effect altogether. Set tapering to 0 and blurriness to 20. The edges could still be more defined, so let's add an inner glow to the bottom layer. Set blend mode to linear light, opacity to 50%, select a lavenderish color and size it to 50%. Now the edges are much more clear. Finally, we'll enhance everything with some minor grading. Add glow. Set threshold to 98%, radius to 100, and intensity to 0.6. Next up, add levels and set input black to 0.1, input white to 0.6, and gamma to 0.6 as well. Oh, and uh, I'm using 32 BPC to get super smooth colors. Since we've already used the slider, we can easily change the intensity of the effect, or even animate it by changing the slider value. What's great about it is that this works with any shape layer or even text. Yo voy a cantar esta canción, yo voy a cantar esta canción para mi gente.